What's going on everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Um, not entirely sure what I'm going to be calling these series of videos, but I'm going to start doing some tying videos for Fish West, so maybe it's just going to be fly tying a Fish West or something creative like that. Uh, the first one we're going to do is a Wally Wing Adams to follow up with the last article I had. So we're already in the vise. We're going to start, uh, this is just a size number 12, uh, wide gap, barbless dry fly hook, but any, um, any normal shank length dry fly hook is going to work for this application. Uh, I'm using Danville's uh, just gray 70 denier. And we will start thread just behind the eye here. Couple wraps, cut it off, snap it off, whatever you prefer. I like to cut it off because that's how I roll. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, get the wings in order for the Wally wing. It's a couple more wraps back and just on top of itself. We just want to place a base for this uh, wing to sit. So the wing is just a uh, barred mallard flank feather and all this fuzzy stuff we do not need. So we are going to get rid of it. And anything that looks even a little bit wispy, just get rid of it. You don't need much of a feather to do this. And so you want to use, you want to try to get the prime parts of the feather that's going to look to make your wing look the best. And so it's a little bit of a experience game for how much of this material you want to pull back from the wing. And of course it's going to really affect how big your wing is. So if you can tell, I've roughly done the shank of the hook and that's going to make a pretty sizable wing. Uh, probably a little over exaggerated for this one, but uh, I kind of like that. And so all I did was split the feather, just pull, stroke the fibers back, as you can see to get them away and form that V shape. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the feather now that we have it like this and we want to pinch these fibers kind of over the shank this way. And so you're kind of getting that I'll roll it around a little bit and get the idea of we're trying to make it push upwards on the stem. So that's a pretty good pinch right there. As so you can see now we've got still this part curving up and these turn the curve away and back. And you still want to get them stroked back. But now they're getting pushed nice and a lot of this, a lot of the Wally wing is really down to feather prep. So I'm pretty stoked on that one. So we're going to flip it around, preen everything back. And the idea here, so I'm going to flip this over. I'm, hopefully I can get this when I edit this, you can see, but there's that spot right there on the stem. I don't know how tight this is going to be or how good clarity is but it's right there on the stem where the fibers are no longer, right? So we stripped the bottom part and everything's forward. So there's that spot right there where there's no longer the, um, the barbs of the feather anymore. That's basically right where we want to tie it in the shank, right in that spot. So we'll preen everything back and right on that spot, you got to hold everything together nice and tight. And that first route can be loose. You just want to make sure everything stays on top. That's the most crucial thing for tying in that wing. So when you tie in that wing right there, the most important thing is that your materials do not roll on the shank. Uh, it can be a little challenging. And those first two or three wraps, uh, I think it's, I find it the easiest if they're kind of soft. You know, they're just kind of gathering wraps to make sure your material doesn't move. And then you can take a couple wraps back and put some pressure on it. It's only 70, so don't go crazy. Uh, and then the next thing, take your thumbnail and just push that up. Just give it a little bit of a push up. Get it to stand up. And then we'll just take some wraps just in front of here. Make that dam. Now she's standing perfectly straight up. 
rest this material on the back. We'll take it and we'll kind of try to cut it at an angle the best of our ability. And what that'll do is when we wrap it down, it'll create a slight bit of a taper, which we want in the body anyways. Uh, and so it's going to naturally aid in that. And plus it's not going to create a huge bulky mess. These wraps don't have to be crazy tight. Sometimes if you go too tight right away, uh, the material, the feather will flare and it just makes it very hard to manage. So we're going to take this down. I'm going to take it down to basically where the barb would be. Kind of right in there. And then I'll come back. That's just the thread base for our next material. The next material is just going to be the fibers off of a, this is just like one of the big feathers off a uh, grizzly, not a grizzly, sorry, like a brown coachman feather. And this is just going to be the, what we're going to use for the tailing feathers or the tailing fiber, sorry. So this could be anything, really. Some people use a uh, coquelion. Um, some people will use the uh, brown coachman and grizzly fibers. Um, I just I just use the uh, the coachman brown. So just took a bunch of fibers off there. We'll gather them up with my fingers here, best I can. Try to do this in focus. And so we get tail about the shank length. Transfer the measurement to the other hand. I like to get those curlies out of there. I'm just going to snip them off out of camera. And so the reason I like to get curlies out of there is because they just create too much bulk. And then we'll capture that. Bring it down to where we want it. And then I'm going to just hold my thread here so it doesn't slip. Go underneath all those fibers and just give it a little tug that way. Helps to keep them um, kind of flared up a little bit. And then we'll trap the rest of those fibers down. And if you've lined everything up there, hopefully you can see this. I got a pretty good taper going on in that bad boy already. So I've done a pretty good job this far. Pretty proud of myself on that one. Uh, and so we'll come just a couple wraps down and we will do the dubbing. The dubbing is just gonna be classic hairline dubbing. Adam's gray, not going crazy. This is an Adam's. We're just going to do a Wally wing. It's the only weird part. Actually, yeah, I'll dub up. We're just going to dub up a little bit and then we're going to tie in our hackle feathers. So just thin near the back and you can build it up a little bit. We already got a pretty good natural taper in there. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't build up the noodle too much as we're going forward. So a little thick right there, so we'll just pull it, stretch it out, thin it out a little bit. So we're dubbed up to there. So what we want to do now is we want to deal with our hackle feathers before we dub the rest of the way up. So we want to tie those in. So the hackle feathers, so in a size 12, one of the things you want to do, or I, I, I prefer the look of, is when your hackle feather isn't going to be as tall as your wing. So this is a size 12 fly. I've kind of already gauged these, but you can hopefully see that these aren't going to be as tall as the wing. That's the look that I prefer. So I gauge these and these, these feathers are a 14. So I gauged a grizzly and I gauged a uh, coachman brown. And so I prefer, that's the look I prefer. It's your fly. Uh, you're the one that has to be confident in fishing it. And so you can choose whatever size you want. So if you want it to be bigger than the wing, that's your jam. If you want it to be the same size, totally up to you. Um, so we're just going to strip those a little bit down, just like that. The shiny side's facing me. And so I've left a little bit of a gap here between the dubbing and where the wing's starting. And I'm going to tie this on on my side. I like to really pack the hack along when it comes to these flies. Again, that's personal. You can sparse it out. You don't have to. This is just kind of how I tie them in my style. So this is my Coachman Brown feather. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm just going to strip off some of the fibers on the bottom to get a tie-in spot. Match it up the best you can with your Grizzly.
Tá, é mesmo. And then take it in front of your wing. Cut those fibers off before the eye. Tie them in nice and good. And then we'll come back and we will finish our dubbing job. Nothing fancy by here, just a regular old, just a regular old dubbing noodle. Pretty thin, pretty compact. So we'll take that. I probably got way too much here. Oh yeah. So that's okay, if you got too much, Get rid of it. Okay, so now that we're fully dubbed up here, we will take our feathers. If you're cool, if you're more comfortable with hackle pliers, give them a go. I do these feathers one at a time. Three behind the wing. Do two in the front. Capture it up right by the eye. Oops. It's two firm wraps. Grab the grizzly. One two, three, get the wing up. It's okay, the wing will be less of a problem once we make it a wing. One, two, I'm gonna do three in front too, with the grizzly. Capture it. Three wraps there, come with our scissors. Snip them off. Very careful not to get your thread. We got some stragglers in there. They need to come out. Cool. Hit her with the old whip finisher. There's four. Cinch her down. Cut her off. Okay, now it's go time. So I'm gonna roll this. I know my focus isn't great on this because it's sticking out so much. I'll roll it back so you can see it in focus. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a single fiber. One sec here. So one fiber on this side. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom side too. Keep the rest together. Normally I wouldn't do this facing you, but I'm just gonna, just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna pop it back up normal. So you take that one fiber and you just pull it down. It creates that one wing. Pull the other one on the other side. It creates the other wing. And what we'll do is we'll come in here, snip that center stem out. You don't have to be super tight with it. It's not gonna affect anything if it's sticking up in the middle. And then we'll cut these off. You don't have to cut them super close. And the last thing to do is just kind of push them inwards. Let 
Maybe push them around a little bit. And there you go. There is a Wally Wing Adams. So I hope everybody enjoyed that, learned something, learned a little maybe after my article and this video, give you a really good idea of how the Wally Wing is tied and it's not nearly as scary as it looks. And uh, yeah, time to go out and fish that sucker. Thanks very much for tuning in and I will try to do some more of these. Have a good one.